newspaper published The Trumpet in uh, Hamilton, Georgia. The Oregon. The Oregon. The, the, Oregon, the Trumpet came later. <laughs> in Hamilton, you watch that. Uh, the Oregon in Hamilton, Georgia. And the family story is that um, he had to fill he had to fill the newsprint space so he could justify all the ads he was selling. So he started putting in shape note tunes in these new patent notes that were the rage of the time. And eventually it came time to collect them into a book. So a collection of newspaper articles collected into a book, which should sound familiar because that's what Charles Dickens did among others. A serial was a good So he got together with his, uh, technically I guess his, not his brother-in-law because they were married to sisters, the fabulous little white sisters, Thurza and Amy. So William Walker is the guy's name. And they were married to these sisters, the Golightly sisters, and they put together a book which they called The Southern Harmony, which was a collection of these pieces out of the organ and others that they had come up with and found. And they put the book together, and the only place that they could publish it was in Philadelphia. So William Walker got on the train with the book and went up to Philadelphia to get it published. And when it came back from Philadelphia with William Walker, it was only William Walker that was on the man's head, and B.F. White had fallen off. This is a source of much family conflict for the last six generations. <laughs> but what happened then was B.F. White, who I should point out is my father's mother's father's mother's father. Um, <laughs> so I might have a biased opinion here. Uh, put together, got together with a farmhand, a local farmhand, 21 years old, named E.J. King, who is the best uh, book editor of the time, as it turns out. And they put together the Sacred Heart. And the Sacred Heart is sung in 12 countries, 30 or 40 states, 3 o'clock in the morning in Minneapolis. <laughs> Southern Harmony is sung at the Big Singing in Benton, Kentucky once a year. <laughs> Karma. So we might be a little gleeful about that. But that is the, the birth of the Sacred Heart in 1844. Quite then went around to a number of places, went as far west as Texas on the train, which is a novel thing, uh, after the, um, the war of Northern Correction. And, um, <laughs> as the family refers to it. And, uh, and started these singing conventions, which look a lot like what you're at here, that is a bunch of people with a bunch of books get together and sing a song. And they're a little more formal than what you're going through tonight, but there's dinner on the grounds at halftime, which is kind of clear, which we kind of got food trucks at midnight, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. So um, he found was a founder of the Chattahoochee Convention, which after which started in 1856 and is still going. Um, he um, was one of the founders of the East Texas Convention, which is 100 and something years old and still going. Um, I haven't been to East Texas yet. I got to go to the 100 in Chattahoochee. That was pretty cool. So um, that's the book. And then that's the convention tradition. Uh, there have been a number of revisions. Uh, we're singing here from the 1991 revision, which is a derivative of a, a, a revision put together by Tom Denson. Um, there is another sort of cousin book, which there's new ones in the back if you want to look at them. It's probably some kind of later called the Cooper book, that's a, a Cooper revision. It has a lot of different alto parts in Cooper like more gospel tunes, whereas it seems to have a song either Shenville and Harmony or more his speed. So they're, they're a difference. Um, one of the major tenets of copyright law is can you copyright an arrangement of music? And the the base case for that is Cooper versus Denson. So um, the Sacred Harp is the thing of famous lawsuits. <laughs> so, um, so, there you go. And so we sing from both. Uh, we sing more from the 1991 edition, but I think that's just a place. Uh, different places to sing from different ones. 1991 edition was put together by a, a music committee. Uh, Hugh McGraw, Richard DeLong, Raymond Hammer's 99th birthday was yesterday. David Hyden, Terry Wooten. Um, Terry, Jeff Shepard, the late Jeff Shepard, David, and um, Richard have all been here to Minnesota to sing with us. Uh, it's very much a living tradition. The, this revision is 25 years old, 20, 23 years old. My guess
guess is we won't revise the pro line yet. It's kind of a conservative thing. We did start letting wins lead 100 years ago. That was new and different. We did add Alco cards 120 years ago. That was new and different. The Southwest Texas Convention had its first female chair about 10 years ago. Nobody made a big chair about that. Um, so we've, we've adapted to the cultural mores of the 21st century slowly. But the key is seek the old ways and walk with it. And so we do this the same way that my ancestors did, that, that others' ancestors did. And that is we start with the shakes, we sing the poetry. So let's talk about the rudiments. The rudiments are all in here in the 1991 edition. Um, the idea is this is sort of your one-stop shop to learn how to sing. You start at the beginning. Sounds are our perceptions of vibrations in the air, which are caused by where's our acoustic stack here, which are caused by vibrating objects, a musical tone, and it goes from there. I'm going to skip most of this. But um, you, the idea here is you begin at the beginning. Um, if you were in the 30s in the South, you went to singing school, which lasted a week and was the highlight, the social highlight of the summer. But let us move on to um, the shapes themselves, which are on page 18. So from degree 1 to degree 8, the major scale in Ionian mode, has the syllable sequence fa, so, la, sa, so, la, mi, fa. So let's sing the major scale here, which is uh, on the left side of page 18. Fa, so, la, fa, so, la, mi, fa, fa, mi, la, so, la, la, so, fa. So the idea is the shapes give you the opportunity to learn the music before you actually have to sing it. Um, the, the shapes help you with intervals. Ba la is always the same interval. Ba so is always the same interval. So once you can learn the shapes, you can, it's easier to guess. You don't really have to learn how to read music. You just know your intervals between your ba's and your serves and your ba's and your ba's. Um, So that's that. The minor scale starts on la. Uh, we can sing the minor scale. La, ba, la, ba, la, la, mi, fa, so, la, la, so, la, la, so, la, la, so, fa, mi, la. It is traditional to sing fa. It says, number point fifteen. At the sixth degree, even though the pitch is actually corresponds to E, so we sing the sixth a little higher in minor uh, key music, and you'll hear that sometimes, and sometimes we don't do it, and Minnesota is kind of a mixed bag on like how often we raise the sixth. So sometimes Kathy Lutz and I look at each other, we'll just do it, and the rest of you just have to follow along with us. So it's worth it. So that's the shapes, and again, the idea is you use the shapes to learn the tune, you have your shot to learn the tune in the 45 seconds before we actually start singing it. And then we sing the tune. And then it's over and we move on. This is not a performed music. This is not a music where you have to go to a lot of rehearsals and thank goodness for that. Many of us have many other things to do in life. And so we enjoy the fact that we can just drop in and sing and enjoy each other's company. And then if I have, well, I have two kids, so I make maybe one sing a month. And so if I only make the one singing month, but it's a really good singing, that's enough. And, and, and I, mean, I guess I missed it, didn't I? But um, the, um, the idea is when you're there, you're part of the community, and you're doing your thing. And, and when you're not there, um, people think about you sometimes. So well, that's a really nice part of it, too. Minnesota convention started about, so Minnesota singing started about 25, 30 years ago. Uh, it was actually a performing group to start called Alden Tree. Uh, I don't know if you earlier was part of that. Um, um, the first Minnesota convention was in 1990, so this is our 20th day. Um, our 25th convention uh, will be in September. And uh, I hope you can all come. And uh, we started singing on the Blue Book on a regular basis about 10 or 12 or years ago now, and so we do that, um, 
that, that convention is a one-day singing convention. Um, we sing every Tuesday night in Dinky Town. We sing three or four Sundays a month in the state. Actually, pretty much every Sunday if you count the state. And um, everybody is always welcome, regardless of perceived skill or ability. It's just a matter of practice. So. Let's go through one tune so that everybody can understand what we're up against here. Um, and that tune is 448 on the top. No, 448 on the bottom, I'm sorry. 448 on the bottom. Um, and we're in the red book, and so we're going to sing the, the melody line is the tenor, which is the second line from the bottom. And um, so it starts on a fa. And so let's just all sing that melody line together. Fa, 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 so, so, la, fa.
seven minutes late. Because <laughs> I couldn't find an entrance to this building. Neither could I. Oh, 
This is for Karen Turner and her friends in Scotland. Yes, Hello, Scotland. Hello, Scotland. <laughs> This does have a page turn in it, but only one. <laughs> Some of them do have more, but this only has one page turn. <laughs> Duly noted. <laughs>